So here's something a little different I've decided to do. I have this old sealed power piston rings clock here. Um, this is something that is kind of special to me. It's uh, something that has been in my father's garage for as long as I can remember. Probably before I was born, most likely. I don't actually know how old it is. And I don't even know the last time it was plugged in. Uh, I do know that it lit up at one point in time. Uh, I can see through a hole in the top that there is a fluorescent tube in it that may or may not still work. Um, even if it does still work, eh, you know, the, the wiring and everything is kind of, can be kind of sketch. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. And if the clock motor itself still functions, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to take the fluorescent tube out of the equation. Probably leave it in there for possible future use if it still works. Um, but just disconnect it, and then I'm probably going to see about using some LED strip lighting. Um, I've got various little pieces and little extra scraps and whatnot that can be used so that we can light this up more modern, uh, efficient, have it give that look, but then it's a little less concern in a sense. Not, not that I think that there's too much concern leaving it as fluorescent, but uh, I think it'll give it a nice touch. So I think the first thing to do here is I'm just going to kind of uh, give this thing a little wipe off. Wipe off the front of it so we can see it a little better. And you can see there's quite the, uh, I mean, it's so thick it doesn't even hardly brush off of there. Uh, we'll get her wiped down a little bit. And then we'll see, you know, does it still work? Does it still light up? And then we'll pull it apart and see what's inside. So we'll go at her with a little bit of the... Uh, little ether, little 409, and kind of give her the old wipe and then see, see what we got. And we'll go from there. Not much better, is it? I mean, stuff is coming off and I see that it's kind of loose. So I don't know if maybe that comes off or what, but my goodness, this is, this is going to take some work to clean this old thing up. If it if it'll really even clean up, I mean, I don't know. I think I'm almost gonna need some goo gone or something. It's it's pretty bad. Ugh. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right now. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing, but this plastic is it's pretty rough. Um, it turns out it does just lift off. So I wiped the inside of it out, but it's still pretty bad. I have this uh, 3M plastic cleaner. I'm just going to rub this around to kind of give it a shot. I kind of put it around by hand and and probably use too much, but it'll be fine. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's worth a try to see if some of this will will come back around or not. But, uh, I guess we'll, we'll see in a minute when I get back. I, no, I gotta tell you, it's just, it's no good. And it's pretty bad in the middle here, so, I don't know, might have to just kind of forego the plastic cover and just leave it open like this, but I guess we'll see. I got, you know, we have options. We've always got options, just to some extent. I guess the real question is now, I mean, it's still dirty as it gets, but let's just... Just wipe this crap off the top. Oh yeah, look at look at that. It's like friggin' tar. That is an awful lot of years of dust and God knows what else. That's probably pure herpes. Something pretty bad. But let's let's plug it in and, and see. Let's see if she does anything. She, she's got any chooch for a factor, or, or maybe she uh, just burns the old the house down here. It's got a nice uh, non-polarized plug here. Very promising. Just kind of... Oh. I heard a little thump. And obviously the second hand's running. But there ain't no... Uh, Ain't no light to speak of. I guess the only thing now is to kind of tear into it and see. But secondhand moving, that's that's a good sign. I like that. It, 
it's the one thing I needed to work. So I think it's worth investigating a little further as to what's going on. So the next thing to figure out is this center piece is obviously loose. Presumably it's to give you access to the bulb or something. And it's, and it's got rub marks like it's been rubbing on it at some point. There's a nut holding the minute hand down, and that makes sense. But I'm just not sure on the second hand. Like, it might just be pressed on there. I'm a little concerned to just kind of pry at it, but I guess we'll just have to find out and see what happens. Another note, a 3M cleaner. It smells kind of good, but I don't know. It's not like it's not like a rubbing alcohol or or a permanent marker smell. It's just I don't know. It's just kind of good. Is the bottle cracked? No, I must have just made a mess. It's not surprising. I'm just gonna pry underneath this and see if we have any luck or if I completely ruin it. Boy, it sure doesn't feel like it's going to come off of there. But boy, it's got to come off of there somehow. I was going to say, maybe it's a nut, but I don't think so. Because that looks like that's, like that's all one piece. But uh, it ain't exactly coming off of there. That's a really good question. I have to consult the Google on this one. Well, I got it off. It actually turns out this is a little threaded knob, but it's strange because it's actually kind of pressed into the second hand. So with the thick paint on it, I couldn't see any of the knurling in the knob there, but it was able to just unscrew. So interesting, strange, not quite what I expected, but simple enough because now we can just unthread this other nut lift off the minute hand set that aside and then the hour hand i'm pretty sure is just pressed onto this shaft rather simply though i say that and that doesn't mean it's going to come off the way i expect it to Naturally. I mean, why would it, right? How in the world is that on there now? Just never ceases to amaze you. Dig it back. It's just pressed on there. If you spin it a little bit, it frees up, and then it comes off. And it's literally just got a little, like, uh, copper or brass bushing just pressed right through the hour hand. So that's good. So now... Okay. You know, it's, it's got just the right level, level of yellowing kind of plastic patina to it that's got a pretty good look. So now I kind of get a look in the inside of the meat of her. Pretty simple. It's quite the chunky fluorescent tube in here. The transformer, and then the little, uh, I don't know the proper term for it, but this I know is kind of like an igniter. I remember playing with these a little bit, starter, a little bit when I was a kid that once the light was on, you could take this out. You don't need this to keep the light running, but you do need this to get the light going. That was, as a kid, just experimenting. Not that I should have been necessarily, but, you know. If you're a kid and you're interested in crap, what else are you going to do? You're just going to play with stuff. So I guess the next question is now is just laying in some of this light stripping in a couple of different spots and seeing how it goes. I'll probably just use, I've got a bunch of these little pieces that are just little three LEDs a piece, um, even with sticky on them already. And so I'll cut these and I'll maybe just place them in like the four corners and then we'll wire them into a transformer and uh, see how that goes. And quite simply enough here, I can see on the wiring, pitch this like this, we'll just take these wire nuts loose that 
That way then we can just redo this all together. And I'm going to take these black wires completely out of the equation. They are for the old fluorescent system. And like I said, I'll, I'll leave it intact because you just never know in the future if somebody else winds up with this thing and they want to try to repair, repair the uh, original fluorescent fixture inside of it. This way nothing is really harmed. So I'll reconnect the clock motor directly and then we'll connect in our own little power adapter. And we'll make a power adapter for this, and uh, it'll go it'll go pretty nicely. So, um, but I want to be honest with you, it's later in the evening now, so I'm gonna have to finish this up tomorrow. But uh, should be pretty good. I think it'll be a a nice little addition. I've already got a nice grip beer clock for in the garage here at home, but I might want to put it up in the garage out in Ladysmith, just kind of a little something something. So I don't know yet. Guess we'll see how she curve turns out and go from there. We're back at it. It's another day. I'm gonna try to continue on this clock project. Um, all set to go. Got me some munchies, you know. Gotta gotta have what you need. We grabbed some more tools here that are gonna assist us. We got our uh, circumciser, uh, sticky film, percussive maintenance, small, very small variety. Yes. Um, Got a dick squeezer, hot boy, hot boy liquid, good to go. So, I said I was going to put LED strips in here and that's the plan, so what I need to do is power them. And so what I've chosen is this Walmart. Um, these are really easy to find actually, there's a ton of equipment out there that powers them and if you go to a thrift store, you can usually find them for like a buck, you know, hanging on the wall or something because they don't match anything necessarily. But anyways, for anybody who doesn't know, <clears throat> you know, most of these LED strips that you can get off of Amazon and whatnot, you can get a 16-foot roll for like 7 bucks, and it's 12-volt power. Uh, so the same power as, let's say, a car, 12 volts. Um, and then, of course, you just have to choose the right amperage based upon how many strips you got. So I'm only going to be putting a couple of these little ones in here, so this is actually going to be overkill. But what you're looking for when it comes to these... Let's see if I can focus on this here. Well, kind of. How about closer? Closer? No? Ah, oh, my goodness. There's just no... Oh, there, right there. Look at that. See how it says output. 12 volts, 1.5 amp. So 1.5 is definitely more than I need. Considering the amount of LEDs I'm going to put in here, I probably only need about half an amp. 1.5 amp will do several feet of light just fine. If you do a small one, and you, the small ones are super common, they're like half an amp for things like uh, Netgear wireless routers and network switches and things. Um, if you run too many lights on them, not only will they not be as bright, but eventually the wall work will just stop working and it'll be done. So <clears throat> I could do the really ghetto way and just like attach wires to this, but we're going to do it a little better. I'm going to use a little percussive maintenance and a little Jimmy Boy breaker open, and then we're going to actually make attachments to the board like it's a purpose to device of sorts here. So we're going to get her in the uh, in the dick squeezer here and uh, give her some some love taps and, and see if we can break into it. All right, I went ahead and angled the camera down so you could see this. So it's, it's a very delicate procedure. You got to be really careful when you go in there. Just kind of very gentle, um, very important to be delicate, you know, you just very, very delicate operation. Use the correct end of the hammer, you know, just very delicate, like, go inside the crack, just, just gentle, be super gentle. I mean, this is a sensitive piece of equipment, and I mean, Lord knows. I wouldn't want to break it or nothing. I mean, that would, that would just, that would just be no good. This is an expensive $1 piece of equipment from the thrift store. I mean, what would you ever do if it was damaged? I tell you, I just don't know. Oh, yeah. And I'll see it. Oops, dropped my hot boy. Hang on now. 
Don't want to be burning things. In all seriousness, these are generally just kind of glued together. So, if we can pry the board out of here. It's got uh, a little mounting tab and some elastic. It looks like this elastic's holding it in from the top. So if I can get the screwdriver down in there, I can pop it out like that. Perfect. Get rid of that. And then there's the AC wires. So we're just going to go ahead and circumcise those real quick. One, two, get rid of that. There we go. This is perfect. Cool thing is you can use your hot boy to actually um, solder some different leads onto it which is actually probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some longer wires and I'm going to remove these and solder on something a little more, shall we say, usable. So, just going to very, honestly, gently just put this in here so it holds it for me. I mean, I don't even have to do that necessarily, but, you know, it, it's going to make life easier. These types of devices, they're non-polarized, so there's not a real urgent concern about which one's white and which one's black, which in um, AC, alternating, alternating current voltage, um, the black is the hot wire and the white is a, a neutral wire or a return. And because alternating current is flip-flopping at all times, um, there's not usually a concern as far as the way it's wired. And generally, that only kind of comes into play with uh, some electric motors and whatnot. So now that I've pulled those wires out, I'm gonna find some wire to uh, make my power leads. So I went over to my uh, scrap wire bucket, got a couple pieces, uh, used the circumciser, um, give the wires a little twist so they stay nice and neat. So I got this end stripped a little long and then the other end is stripped really short. I stripped this end short because it's gonna go right into the circuit board and the long end is gonna get twisted together with the wire nuts on the actual light. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these tinned in. Really easy. Just got to find the right little hole. There we go. And get the other one in. So if I would have used thinner wire, it would have been a little easier. This wire is a bit big for the hole, but with a little bit of uh, prodding, I was able to get it in there. Um, and so it is a little sloppy on this end, so I'm going to just add a little extra solder just so that I know it's, it's got a good connection. Let it get nice and hot. The solder flow is really good. Just a dab. And there we go. That is so much better. And I'll just kind of show you here. So, so you can kind of see my connections. I just put the wire through the board. This one is a little splayed, but it's not touching anything, so that's fine. It'll be safe. Um, like I said, I could use thinner wire, too, because <clears throat> it's not like this thing is running anything heavy. So, honestly, thin wire is just fine. The thin, the wire I cut out of it was actually pretty thin. Um, I probably could have even used the same gauge as the output wire. I mean, this is equivalent to, like, speaker wire. It's, like, 20 gauge, maybe 18. I don't know. Pretty thin stuff. And I don't really have to do anything with this end because I can already just use this wire and tie things together really easy like that. So now I've got a nice power supply to take my 110 in on the clock and bring it out the 12 volt side. So we're going to get some stuff laid into the uh, clock and uh, see what we're looking at. Alright, so before we get into actually laying the LED in here, <clears throat> we'll touch base again really quick just a little bit more on uh, dealing with this LED strip if you never have before. Um, on all these little types of LED strip, for example, these 12 volt ones, you're going to usually have three LEDs per basically assembly. So these LED strips are always going to have these little cut marks, and they'll actually have a line that says to cut here kind of thing. And that's where you've got your little, let's see, come on, negative side, and the other side is positive. And this camera just does not want to focus on that tiny writing. But anyways, like for example, that's what I did here is I went ahead and I tinned the wires in and I had daisy, chain, daisy chained these two pieces together. So what I'm going to do now is I already took the transformer 
and I cut the excess wire off and made it to the length that I need and um, I just trimmed a little bit of plastic off the end and so I'm going to go ahead and tin these wires to this and then using some of the excess wire that came off of this I got another little extension cable that I kind of gave a, a rough measurement that I'm going to tin to the other one so that way these all four of these will be connected together and this is a really really easy process uh, I usually just find something as kind of a weight to kind of hold it down. I'm just going to use this little vise as a handy dandy little workbench. Uh, take the wire here. Now the easiest way to do these, this actually does already have solder on it, but when you cut them they're usually going to have little copper um, blank pads. So what you want to do is you're going to want to take the soldering iron and you're going to want to heat up the pad a little bit first and get, get some of the excess solder off of there and then get some solder on the actual copper pad itself. So you get it hot and then you get some fresh solder on there and then you're actually going to want to tin the wires too. Um, by tin, you know, that usually is what people refer to as actually you know putting solder on the end of the wire. So same thing here, I'm just going to use the pliers to kind of hold it in place for me. And then I'm just going to go ahead and get the wire hot with the soldering iron and make it so that way there's solder on the end of the wire. Knock off the excess there. Come on. There we go. I'm going to redo this one. It was a little crappy. That way, these will actually connect up really easy now. <clears throat> so now, we'll take and put this back on here. And... Now you're going to want your 12 volt side. Now I'm going to say 19 times out of 20, maybe even higher than that, you know, 99 times out of 100, the wire with the stripe on it is going to be your positive wire. Um, you can use a multimeter to check, might not be a bad idea. If you reverse the polarity on these LED lights, usually nothing happens. They just don't work, but they don't get damaged. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to tin the one with the stripe wire onto the positive side. Just get it hot and sink it on there. Hold it for a second while it cools. It cools really quick. You know, the weight of this is just fighting me here because I'm being silly. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Grapes. You know, they make contraptions for holding stuff like this, but of course, you know, even though I do a fair amount of soldering, I, I've never had a need to really buy one. They call them helping hands. So I just, I don't know. I guess I just like struggling. Clearly. Come on now. What in the world? It's, oh, it's stuck on the plastic. There you go. And now I'm going to tin this wire to the other end. And then to the other end of this, and we're going to have them all daisy chained together. And then we'll give it a test and see how it works. All right, so now that these are all tinned together, they're all daisy chained. Before I stick them down, I'm going to wire the AC side in so we can test it. So I'm just going to go ahead and wire these back up the way they were. Except that this time now I'm going to include the new wire for this transformer. And I'm not going to reconnect the old transformer for the uh, fluorescent system. Let's go ahead and tie these on in. Motor to the AC wire here. Naturally, you don't want this to be plugged in while you're doing it. Otherwise, you'll get quite the tickle. Unless if you're into that sort of thing, I guess. I mean, your choice. I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. All right, so now we're gonna test it before we plug it in. Obviously, we have exposed contacts on the bottom here, so you don't want this to be on anything metal, and you certainly don't wanna be holding it in your hand, because once again, you get quite the tickle, unless if you're into that sort of thing, because we're gonna end up mounting it right to the plastic, so it'll be plenty safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the clock in here, and let's see if we get light. Be a slight delay. I got nothing. There was just a delay, I guess. Uh, must have been pulling capacitor down or something weird. Not really sure why there was that much of a delay. I guess let's uh, disconnect it and try it again. 
So if I could if I could get the plug out of the damn outlet. Oh cripes. That's about normal. Plug it in. Oh, that's pretty good. I know there's a tiny delay with this transformer. I've used the same model transformer for plenty of other things. And I can feel this motor spinning, so I know the clock is running. So yeah, so now all of them are lit up, and we're just gonna place them inside here, and we're gonna stick this bad boy down. So I'm sure this is not the right way to do it, but I just went ahead and slapped some double stick adhesive on here, and we'll call it a day. I mean, it's not gonna conduct electricity anyways, and this is a pretty uh, low wattage, you know, little instrument. So I'm just gonna just kind of stick it on down right there, and that'll be great. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick these little guys in place. It's always a matter of fighting this dang red stuff off, you know, it's just honest to goodness. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna, I don't know, put that right there. You can kind of see what we're doing. And we're just gonna stick these around accordingly. There we go. So I went ahead and I just kind of stuck them in the corners and and laid the wire here and I mean honestly it's not like you're gonna see the wire anyway so honestly that should be fine so if we kind of plug it in kind of see what we got going there and then we can just kind of put this little guy back in place you gotta kind of tuck his little tabs in here Apparently a bit of a kind of a, a fight in its own way getting those tabs in place. All right, so now that we've got the plastic back on, I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble these clock hands. And I'm just going to put them all at 12 o'clock. And make sure this little guy is down all the way. We're just going to just going to put the screwdriver on its little bushing and just give it a couple of just a couple of gentle little taps. That should be good because that one's kind of a press fit. Now obviously these clock hands have a silver side and a black side, so obviously I want to do black side up. Um, oh, good news is that's already kind of where I want it anyways. Once the hand's in place, you can kind of move it and adjust the clock. So then I can thread the tiny little nut back on here. which for the most part goes on by hand just fine. And then the little second hand, well, this was a weird one because this was actually threaded. Very strange. If I can just kind of get it started on there. Make sure that they're not gonna hit each other, but I gotta get it down all the way first anyways. There we go. That should be okay. No, the hands aren't hitting each other. I'm gonna plug it back in and see how she looks. There we go. It's now running. I guess I'll have to check and see if she's still, you know, 60 seconds is 60 seconds kind of thing. But uh, I would imagine so. Let's see what it looks like with the lights off. All right. That looks nice. You know, it's kind of got that original glow because it's kind of a lot of yellowing to the plastic. That's pretty good. I mean, these are these are the kind of cool white daylight LED. If I wanted a bit more of a warm glow, I could just go with a warm white. I mean, honestly, you could use any color LED you want. Um, this stuff is super easy to work with. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say this clock is now fuel efficient because, I mean, well, it is an electric motor clock. It's probably more fuel efficient than it was with the fluorescent. And probably, in a sense, safer, considering, I mean, that old fluorescent fixture, I honestly have never heard of them, you know, causing any fires or anything. But, you know, it's safer the better. You can kind of see little hot spots of where the lights are, but, I mean, that doesn't really bother me too much. But, yeah, I mean, there you go. It's a simple, this makes a wonderful garage art piece um, to kind of put into perspective. I'd actually done this once before. I've got to do a repair to it, but I have a frosty root beer clock, and this thing holds time great. Um, my LED strip that I used in the bottom didn't work right off the bat. 
and for some reason I was too stupid to test it before I plugged it in. So the clock face is lit up just fine, and it's been up here for over a year now, um, but the frosty sign itself is not lit up. So that is something I'm going to go back in to take a look at. But uh makes for great little garage art. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty slick little clock. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, the sealed power piston rings, it's a, it's pretty cool. And the question is, maybe I bring it to Wisconsin, or, or maybe I find a new home for it, someone who can appreciate it and, and love it as much as I do. So, uh, if you stuck through this, thanks for watching. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, you know, hopefully you can find something like this at an antique shop or something and kind of repurpose it and make it great. I mean, honestly, if you wanted, you could take the whole clock mechanism out and put a little AA battery operated one in and you could still light it up if you want. And then it's very much efficient. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a, just a fun little project. So yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it and uh, have a great day.